Alrighty, with this particular tutorial, we are going to learn how to use the clone tool in combination with the lasso feather and curves. Okay, so I know last time you did a, a lesson on the clone tool. This one won't be as extensive, but it will definitely, you know, just have you do more practice with the clone tool so that you get comfortable with it. The first thing we are going to start with is the lasso feather and curve. So we're going to duplicate our layer. We're going to call it working image. We're going to select OK. And we're going to duplicate that layer again. And we're going to call it uh, curves. All right, because that's ultimately what we're, we're adjusting on here is our curves are on our histogram. So we're going to say OK. And what we're going to do is look at our value tones in this image. We've got some light areas over here that we want to darken, um, as well as here in the left corner. So let's start with that first. We're going to come over here and use our lasso tool. And we're going to select all of this like right corner, just kind of like this lighter area in here. And we're going to go to Select and Mask. Again, we're going to make sure we're on the white. And we're going to feather this at 150 so that it gradually blends out. And then we're going to say OK. And we're going to come up to Image Adjustment Curves. And we're going to bring our histogram down a little bit and just darken that area a little bit. We're going to move it around to see you know, what part we want to darken, what part we want to lighten. Well, that looks pretty good. OK. So we got to output about 115, 168 around there. Select OK. I'm going to uh, select this part here, the left corner. Go to Select and Mask, 150. OK. Image, Adjustments, Curves. Again, I'm going to make that a little darker. I'm going to just kind of like bring it down, just kind of move it around and see what as I do this, I'm always looking at my image. Um, I want it to be the top to be a little darker here. Yeah, oh, that's too much. That's definitely too much. OK, so maybe right about there, OK. And then I'm going to um, maybe look at this section in here, like this blue and green section in here, and just see if maybe I want to adjust that. Go up to Select Mass, 150. And then I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Curves. Bring that down. No. Nope. All right, that looks good. And maybe this green left corner here a little bit and go to Select Mask, 150. And then let's look at that. And maybe bring that down a little bit. OK. And then if we turn that on and off, we can see that we've now not only made our area a little area a little bit darker, but it also helps to enhance the colors a little bit and make the, the saturation of the colors stand out a little more. Okay, so now it's time to do some cloning, and we're going to do the cloning on top of this image. So that means we need to duplicate our curves layer and call it uh, the cloning tool. So we'll just call it clone tool. Okay. And what we're going to clone out is these branches in the water. And this little white speck here, and maybe this yellow leaf is kind of bugging me a little bit over here. I'm going to leave the birds, OK? So I'm going to come over here and grab my clone tool. I'm going to put my opacity to about 75% um, because it's pretty simple cloning I'm doing here. And I'm going to put my brush size to about 45. I'm just going to take out these white branches. There's lots of great texture in the water, so and it's not you know totally precise. So it'll clone out very well, and it will look very natural. 
get rid of that. You can notice that as I hold down my Alt key, um, I am doing it like every time, every time. Le so I'm holding down the Alt left click and then cloning Alt left click and cloning Alt left click and cloning Alt left click and cloning that I keep changing my location. I don't just keep the plus only to the right. I'll bring it to the left or I'll bring it to the right. And so I keep changing w my plus symbol, which represents the area that I'm cloning and the circle is what is being cloned, okay? So when I see that plus, that means some of that blue is now moving into the circle, okay? I'm getting rid of those dark branches there. It's all kind of like rocks and you can see the kind of like blue water with like rocks coming through. Getting rid of that white speck there, getting rid of that white speck. I can even zoom in, control plus, bring this down a little bit and just, you know, get a better view of what I'm doing. So little shadows left from those branches. I'm getting rid of those shadows. As you go, as you crop in, you start to see a little more, all these little more specks you want to get rid of, all these kind of like white specks that maybe are rocks, but might be noise, visual noise or dirt on your lens possibly. Um, okay, let me get rid of this leaf here. And I'm going to zoom back out again, and let's turn off the layers just to see what we did. Okay, so there is before we added the curves, and then we duplicated the layer and got rid of all those branches and, and the shadows of the branches and the little white specks, and then uh, that looks pretty darn good. We're going to do a print screen of that and bring it over to our Google Slide project. We're going to make sure we're on the texture page, and we're going to control V, paste that on, and we're going to crop into our image. There we go, crop here. All right, and enter, move it to the corner. Make this larger here, just kind of bring that up to our technical specs and we're going to move this box over and we are going to select um, first let's bring the image to the back and we're going to move our arrow to the grass over here on the right and we're going to move our arrow to the rocks over here on the left and we're going to move this box over and we're going to have it pointing to the water right here pointing to the water okay so we've got grass rocks and water and now we're going to go and look at our contact sheet with all our practice images and we're going to get our technical specs for this image we're going to right click on it and go to properties and we're going to go to details and we're going to come down and figure out, oh, it was taken with an iPhone, and it was F2.2, uh, 1 30th of a second, which is actually a very slow shutter for hand holding. Um, an ISO of 32, which is low light, sensitiv light sensitivity, and 4 millimeters, which is extremely wide angle lens. Now we're going to come back to our image. I bet you if we zoomed in on this image, we'd see a little bit of motion blur because typically a shutter speed of 30, 1 30th of a second is actually too slow of a shutter for hand holding. Okay, you never want to hand hold anything over 1 60th of a second. Our focal length is at 4 millimeters, which is extremely wide angle. Our f stop was at 2.2 which is typically a shallow depth of fill, but because we're using a four millimeter lens, we don't get the benefit of that. Everything is in focus. And we have a 32 
uh, ISO, which means that our light sensitivity is extremely low. And the benefit of that is that we have, we don't have any grain here, we don't have any noise, so it's a pretty good quality image. And once you fill that in, now you're going to come over here and you're going to fill in your boxes with the type of texture you see here. What, how would you describe the texture over here in the grass? How would you describe the texture on the rocks? How would you describe the texture in the water? Okay, so I want you to describe the texture, look at the definition of texture, and use all the proper terminology and that is associated with texture to give you a proper description of what you see here.